What is up, heroes? This is Minade Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we defused all of the bombs and made our, our way to the final room queue, which was just this blank white room until this cube showed up in front of us. I think this cube is just floating here. Interesting. Maybe that's where the cube comes from. Cube? How the heck's it doing that? Who knows? Can't tell just by looking at it. Why don't you touch it and see if anything happens? Are we playing, like, essentially Minesweeper, or what? Interesting. So, these ones over here on the left indicate 3-3. Three, three. But, like, over here there's a bunch of, like, zeros, right? And a lot of them. So I'm tempted to think there's really only one thing, whatever, whatever it is, it's going on in this bottom left corner here. Hmm. I don't understand what's going on here. Have another look at it, huh? The cube, look at it again. Okay. There are winning and losing panels on the wall. The cube can help you find the winning panels. When the winning panels, and only the winning panels, are highlighted in cyan, the system will activate. Here is how to find the winning panels. When you click a panel on the cube, it will display a number. Each surrounding panel will also Display a number. This number indicates the number of winning panels that border each panel. It's like Minesweeper. For example, the the black ones are losing, the white ones are winning in this diagram. I don't really understand the, the zero, zero. Oh no, these are supposed to be like the numbers that would display along each row, right? So it includes the tile itself, right? Which is notable, and it doesn't include diagonals. Note 1. The hint that appears on the cube is different for each side. Wow, what a text. Uh, hypothetic hypothetically, if the wall with the exit is the north wall, then the wall to the right of that would be the east wall, which would make the wall with the entrance the south wall, and the wall to the left of that would be the west wall. That would mean that a hint that appears on the west side would actually refer to the east wall. Wait, what? That would mean that a hint that appears on the west side would actually refer to the east wall, and a hint that appears on the north side would actually refer to the south side, and a hint that appears on the east side would refer to the west wall. I don't understand how that's a direct product of what was said in the first couple sentences. Huh. Alright, well, I'll just try to remember that, I guess. Adjacent walls don't provide hints for one another. Each hint is specific to that wall. That means that even if there are winning panels on the border with an adjacent wall, those panels will not be reflected in the initial panel's numbers. Okay. Note 3, there are a total of 8 puzzles hidden in the walls. Okay. Click the floor to view this message one more time. After that it will be gone forever. Why you gotta do that? Like, what's the point, what's the purpose of saying, oh yeah, you can only read this one more time, and then you have to memorize everything about it. Like, why not make it a reference? So, we don't even know which wall this is, do we, right? We just know that there are the threes here. So, what are the winning panels then, right? Um, it's definitely, oh, oops, well, that's the wrong button, but... Oops. So, I don't know if I just wasted this again, but the winning panels are clearly here in this corner. It's this one in the bottom left, and then the one above it, and then the one above that, and then this one up here. But I don't even know which uh, wall I'm referring to. So, okay. Um... All right, so that must have been the, the wall that we were first playing with. Whoa, what the heck? Hmm, interesting. So that's how this one works. It looks like there's more of them. We should keep looking. Something just slid out from the wall. You can look around more by exiting zoom mode and returning to the normal view, okay? Whew, can I, oh my goodness. I can't like, no, nope. all right, well I just ruined it by reviewing that the last time necessary. 
Unless they're actually letting me do it more than once. If so, that would be nice. Now I can rotate. Lovely. What am I looking at here? This is like the same thing from the control room, right? It's got some kind of weird patterns on it. Nothing happens if I touch them, though. Maybe something's missing. Like what? Okay, maybe some sort of like light or, or activation of some sort. I'm not really sure. So this is a different side of the cube. Hmm. So... Is it that we've already activated this? Let me check real quick. So let me see if I have, if I click on a different side. Interesting. So if I click on this left face right now, this is what I get with this, which I'm pretty sure is the what we just did, right? But if I click on this right face, I get something different completely. So in that situation, it's the bottom left, the two on the bottom left, and that's pretty much it, from what I can see at least. Oh, and then there's one over here. So there are two in the bottom left, and then it looks like there are three in the bottom right as well. So two in the bottom left and three in the bottom right. So let's rotate. Can I please rotate? Okay. So two in the bottom left, and then three in the bottom right. So that was ineffective. This is the whole, like, which wall refers to, oh my goodness. So, part of what's frustrating is every time I click, it's like, do you want to zoom in on the wall or do you want this thing? So when I clicked on this face here, so it's like opposite. Nope, I don't want to zoom in on that. I don't want to zoom in on that, I just want to rotate, thank you. I see, so it's basically the side of the cube you're looking at corresponds to the wall you're looking at. So in this case, it would be this one and this one. Is there a way to make them go back though? Because there are also three over here. Okay. So we've got some stuff to explore. Let's take a look at this real quick. Oh my goodness, this is so funny. So this is the ninth escape room, right? This is the ninth in the, the ultimate room. I figured when I was like, I had my suspicion when they said there were gonna be eight puzzles to solve, but each of them is going to be a reference to one of the other escape rooms we've done, which is pretty cool. Are those missiles? <laughs> They're darts. Look over here. I think that's a green memory card. We can't get it out though. That glass is covering it. I think we can get some darts out though. Okay, I'll grab a couple. Alright, so we've obtained darts. A bunch of tiny sidewinders, huh? You know, the ones they mount on the underside of fighter planes. <laughs> These aren't missiles! They're darts. And we can't exactly get them out of the glass yet. Hmm. This looks like a display case. There are a number of darts on the left and on the right of screen, memory card. Well, I'm happy to have these darts and all, but what am I supposed to do with them? How about you throw them as hard as you can at that glass that's covering the memory card? Waste of time. That's reinforced glass. Darts aren't going to break it. If there are darts, then that means there's probably a dart board somewhere around you. Let's see if we can find it. Let's take a look at this now. Change the colors to the correct ones by clicking the hexagons and triangles. Remember that you only have five moves to complete this puzzle. Huh. I feel like I've done this puzzle somewhere before. Ah, well. Doesn't really matter, I guess. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what the, uh... What the intent was. Ugh, this is tough. And whether or not... Nope, that's not what I wanted to happen. Oh man, navigating this room is gonna be really frustrating. Every time I try to rotate, it's just a different thing. There's a binder behind the glass. Oh, there's glass. Okay. As well as a red SD card, or red memory card. Okay. Not every day you see a... I'm not even sure what to call this. A cabinet? Not every day you see a cabinet like this. It looks like each of these cubbies has something in it. The one on the left looks like a binder, and on the right it looks like you've got a red memory card. We can't get to them though, they've got glass doors. 
Punch through them. All right, here it goes. Don't. This is reinforced glass. The only thing you're going to break is your hand. So I think the idea is we have to remember how we were supposed to solve the previous iterations of these puzzles, because we're not going to be shown how to do so. So let's see. I think one of them was to turn all of these to be the same color. No, it was like either all of the triangles or all of the hexagons one color, right? It was something like that. I'm out of moves, right? Yeah. I'm trying to remember. I can click on the triangles too, right? Yeah, I remember that messing me up before. Hmm. Let's see. So I guess, what, what should I start with, right? Let's try and make all of the hexagons green. Let's make that our goal for now. Okay, well we made everything green. <laughs> for better or for worse. <laughs> I don't think that was, uh, I don't think that's how we were supposed to go about it. I wonder if it's the exact same setup. It almost makes me laugh. Let's see here. We have illustration of a dice game, door puzzle instructions. I was going to say, I thought that we would maybe have some information from this. Billiards poster, darts poster, big monitor hint, colorful note. No. Hmm. Yeah, because I remember this is just something we saw what it looked like in the control room, right? No, that's the wrong room. I really don't want to have to go back and look. Yeah, I remember that from the PEC. Okay, well... Let's see what we can do. Hmm. Nah. Let's try and get the triangles. For some reason, I, I feel like that's one that's sticking with me a little bit better. So we can do that. And then similarly, we can do that. And then... No. We only have five moves. Hmm. already not gonna work unfortunately yeah I could try to do that but we're inevitably gonna end up in a pretty shaky spot when we try to do that So how do we get around that? Not quite. I don't. Re I don't remember what the pattern is. We'll come back to this. How the heck do I solve this? 
because I think this is just the starting position they give, right? Yeah, I think so. Oh, what does it say for the instructions? Change the colors to the correct ones by clicking the hexagons and trying. Remember that you only have five moves. Okay, and yeah, those are just the indications of the, the starting arrangement, but not actually what, what we're supposed to get to. Alright, we'll come back to it later, I guess. Nope, that's not what I wanted to click on. Alright, so we've already gotten this side. Let's take a look at this side here. Wow, so things are pretty dense over here. Um, given that this is three, um, all three of these in the bottom left corner need to be, well, essentially, um, you know, winning tiles. If we go this way, then, well, I think it's still just the bottom f four, this little square here needs to all be, um, Actually, what's really convenient about the fours is if they're up against a wall, they tell you what that every single tile <laughs> needs to be one. So the bottom left, the one above that, and the one above that, and then this one here are all winning tiles. So if this one's only connected to three, it can either only be the one that I'm clicking on right now or the one immediately to the right of it. Oh, man, am I, I going to have to like draw this? Let's see here. I can pull up the memo pad, and I think that'll be decently helpful. So this is a winning tile, this is a winning tile, this is a winning tile, this is a winning tile. I love the memo pad, I just realized in the top left it's called brain memory. That's really funny. Okay, so... This one here might be, it might not be, this one could be. But if it's connected to two and these other ones are connected to three, Mm, well, this is a four, so that easily um, rules in certain things, right? This one was the four? Yeah. That means this is a winning tile, this is a winning tile, this is a winning tile, and this is a winning tile, too. So if this is a four, but this is a one, right? That means this is the only winning tile it's connected to. So I guess I can mark these as like, this is not a winning tile. This is a losing tile, right? Because we know that this one is definitely connected to this one, which we know is a tile from this. So if this is a tile, then neither of those three are, are winning tiles. So I'll, I'll do this as well, just even though it's a zero, so it's obvious, but... <clears throat> and it also means that this is not a winning tile if it's a one, right? So if this is a two here, Let's see. We don't know any of the tiles it's potentially connected to yet. Let's continue to kind of skirt around the, the border here. So if both of these are ones, right? These are threes. We know all four of these are winning tiles and this is a one. And if that's a winning tile, then that means this bottom one in the corner cannot be a winning tile, right? And if this is a zero up here, and this is a one, it means the one to the left of it must be a winning tile. And that's just because if this tile here were a winning tile, this number up here would not be zero, right? So now we know that that's a winning tile as well. We know that this is a three, right? It includes all three of those, so we've used up that clue essentially, right? And it means that we know that this one is not a winning tile. Cool. Slowly but steadily making progress. So, I wish I could just overlay these. <laughs> um, but anyways. So this one is a three, right? And we know it's bordering two winning tiles. So either this tile here or this tile is a winning tile. We don't know which one yet. So let's readdress this these bottom two here, right? So we know that Similarly, this one here is bordering two winning tiles for sure. Oh, I can kind of interrupt it like that. That's pretty helpful. So, if this one is two though, what does that mean? We know it's bordering one. Mm, that's not super helpful yet. This one is three. We know it's bordering one. Hmm. Yeah, we don't really know yet. Let's approach from further away and kind of get a better grip on things. 
So zero and zero, we know that this is obviously a losing tile and this is a losing tile. But both of these are ones, right? Which is good to know. This is a losing tile, this is a losing tile, and this is only connected to one. It could be itself and they're just zero around it. Let's see if that's the case. No, that's definitely not the case, right? No matter what, because this central tile is a four and we know it's connected to two, two of the remaining three tiles have to be winning tiles. No matter what that arrangement is, well, no, that'll always lead to one for the top tile, right? Unless we know if it, let's just say hypothetical, if these were winning tiles here, right, then this would be a two, which means we know it can't be that combination. So if it's not that combination, what are the two remaining combinations? It's either this one and this one, or this one and this one. What does that mean? It means we know that this tile that has a two on it currently is a winning tile. So that's got to be a winning tile. Okay. Let's see if that helps us out a little bit more. So now that we know that that is a winning tile, and we know that this is a one here, we know that this is a losing tile. We also know that this is a losing tile, which is going to mean that this one, that which was a four, is going to be a winning tile. What about over here? This is a one, so that's a losing tile as well. What about here now? So now we know, eh, we still don't know enough for that. Down here. What about over here? Three. We still don't know which one it is though, right? Actually, we do because we know that the one where it's displaying a two uh, is, has to be hitting two winning tiles and it's currently not only touching one, so this has to be a winning tile here. Which means that three indicates that this is a losing tile here. And that fills up the three, which means this is also a losing tile. And then in the bottom left, what do we have? A three, which means that it itself must be a winning tile. Okay, let's inspect the rest of the board to see if there's anything else lurking in these corners up here. Nope. Okay, so we know which ones we have to, to hit. So it's this one and this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Not these ones. Okay. In all these different combinations. And then, I think it was just six, right? These ones. Yep, and there's the dice game. All that fun stuff. All right, let's rotate around again. I think we already got this wall. We just haven't done this one, right? Whew. All right, so let's see here. This is a one, this is a two. Let's see if there are any fours. The fours are easily the, the most useful. All of these are ones. That's pretty interesting. I think that means that this one is a uh, is a tile, a winning tile. But it's the only winning tile in that area. I I'm curious. Let's just test that real quick. <laughs> it is. And there's our dartboard. Lovely. Okay. Let's see if there's anything else to work with in here. Or we know there's stuff to work with here, right, in the lower left corner. So one and one there. And then a two. So I can erase that for now. One and one with two, that means very likely this is going to be a winning tile. And let's see what we say down here. One, and we know that these ones up here are not, so this would be one. And that would mean that this also is. And if this is a two, that means it's not. And we can confirm that again by having the zeros surrounding it, right? 
So then down here, it's touching one, so that's good. What about over here, just to be safe? We already exhausted all of that. So I think we're actually okay. Yeah, so it's just those, that little L shape there. Okay, so I think we've unlocked all of the puzzles. Now we actually need to solve them. So what do we want to do first? Uh, we're actually gonna have to remember, we're gonna have to remember that hexagon diagram. I think what I'll do is I'll just pull up like a, like the wiki page or something for the control room and see what, uh, what the diagram looked like slash the goal was there. By the way, we have the darts. Let's let's do that for now. That's a dartboard. I I remember seeing this before. Come on, who hasn't seen a dartboard before? No, that's not what I mean. I feel like I've seen it somewhere in this building before. It's just this board is different from a normal dartboard, you know? Hmm. Let's try it out. What do you mean try it out? Isn't that obvious? There's only two ways to use a dartboard. Either you use it to hold a pizza, or you throw darts at it. <laughs> You've got some darts, don't you, Sigma? Maybe you could try throwing them. Okay. Uh, what was the, um, what were the instructions again? I really, <laughs> I really wish they would just tell me. I get that, like, you know, the whole deal is he has good memory and everything, but. Okay, let's see what we can find. Darts poster. Okay, so 20 by 1 is 20. And then, of course, the 20 times 3, etc. Yeah, I mean, that's how darts work. But it doesn't tell us. Oh, man. I'm trying to remember, there was the, the case that we opened and it had an inequality on it, right? We're, of course, not going to have that in here, are we? That's from the pantry. Darn it. Yeah, I don't remember what the exact... I don't remember what the instructions were. I'm, I'm gonna have to look it up, guys. The fact that this is a thing is so frustrating. <laughs> it's like cool that we have to think back on all of the different, um, all the different puzzles and like it incorporates them, but the fact they don't give you the instructions again, they're like, oh, I hope you remembered it. And if you don't, it's like, all right, well, I guess I'll save my game and then go back to the flowchart and go back to that room and find that specific puzzle's instructions. And then after writing them down, because God forbid I have to check them again, go back to this room and try to solve it and do that for all eight puzzles. I don't know. I mean, I've played this game over the course of five, six months now. I don't remember each of these, but it's all good. I'll jump cut in a second. All right, so it looks like in the dark case, it says, the score is 91 with the green target being the largest, the blue one being, you know, medium, and then the red one being smallest. So let's try and do that. Get a score. <laughs> and of course, I click on it and it's like, get a score of 100 with three darts. That's hilarious. I spent all this time complaining about it and you guys were like, just click on it already. Just click on it. <laughs> I assume it would be the same as the hexagons. However, the first dart must land in the green area, the second in the blue, and the third in the red. Throw a dart at a particular area, drag and then release the dart on the area where you'd like it to land. Huh? That's weird. I could have sworn I've seen these darts before somewhere else. Whatever. Time for some darts. So the first is green and we're aiming for a score of 100, right? <laughs> That's funny. Alright, well I appreciate it that they're at least repeating it this time. So what are our options um, for... The red, we have, what, 14, 16, 21. I should write these down, shouldn't I? Yeah, I probably should. So our green options, right, from smallest to largest, I guess, are 6, 
and then 11, and then 14, oh no, eight's up there too. Six, and then eight, and then, I think I said 11, right? Yeah. So 11, and then 14, and then 16, and then, what are the triple ones? So 18, and then, wow, 52, or 42, and 39. Okay. 18, kind of running out of space. 39, and then 42. So I think those are all of our green options. What about our blue options? We've got seven, eight, as well as some other big numbers, right? What's that in the bottom left again? Six, yeah. So then we're jumping to 12, oops, it automatically defaults to green again. 12, and then 24, I think, no, 22, and then 24, and then 28, and, oh, I think that's it, actually. No, we still have 13 as well, so I'm going to put 13 there. And then for red, what do we have? For red, we have... 8 and 14 and 16 and 26 and 33 and oh, also 21. Okay, so these are our options. We have to add up to 100 with these, right? So what are some options that immediately jump out? I guess... Um, the green and the red, 39 and 33 together, make what, 72 plus 28 blue? I think that's it. So 39, 28, 33. So it would be 39 and then 28. And then 33. Nice. Ha! Piece of cake! See that? My dart skills are undeniable. Yes, I saw it quite clearly. It was very nice. Do you really think you had to stand the whole 2 meters and 37 centimeters away from the dartboard, though? I'm a fair man. My high school voted me most likely to be a judge, you know. Okay, okay. That's great and all, but look. See the display case? It's open. Great. Now we can get that green memory card. Okay, let's grab the green memory card. Hmm. We're gonna have to pull out all the stops on this job. You sound like you're in a heist movie. <laughs> Should I have worn a cat suit? Ugh. I think I just threw up a little. Besides, everybody in a heist movie wears a sweet suit. Alright, so that's one done. Whew. Alright, moving on to the next one. What do we have over here? I, I think I've seen something like this before. This is probably when we finally open it and we see zero or something. Oh, you mean one of those exercise machines where you twist your hips around? No, no, I don't think so. This doesn't look like a fitness machine to me. Kinda ruins it when you take it so seriously. This is... is, uh... Darn it. I can't remember. A screen, huh? There's nothing on it. And it doesn't do anything when I touch it. How do we turn it on? Heck if I know. I don't see a button or a card slot or anything. Not a lot we can do if we can't turn it on. Mm-hmm. Might as well leave it alone for now. Okay, then let's go on over this way. We have our dice game. Roll the six dice to move them to where they need to go. The direction of each side of each die must match a specific pattern. Choose which die you would like to move by clicking it. You can roll it vertically or horizontally by clicking and dragging the mouse or using the arrow keys. Okay, let's give it a shot. <laughs> but what pattern? Um, it's got to be somewhere in the archive. Nope, not that dice game. Nope. 
Uh, I don't think so. Yep, I don't think we're gonna find that note, are we? It was from the library. Yep, so we're gonna have to match a specific pattern, but I don't know what that is. So, all right, <laughs> now the frustration comes back. All right, so I've got it pulled up. Part of the concern though, let's see. So this tile, oh man, I can't even really draw to show you guys where it is. Um, let me see if I can draw it here for you. So this is the shape that we worked with earlier. And so we are trying to get red five here and blue six here and red two here and green four here, blue one here and then green three here. So let's go ahead and give that a go. Oops, not quite. I'm trying to remember, because I had a pretty good system for this, honestly. How I could rotate things in a certain way. So for example, what I could try to do is get it so that five is on top here and then rotate up like that. Boom, five, just like that. All right, what's up next? Um, let's aim for the blue six, I guess. How do I want to do that? Mm, I don't think I can do it with that one, actually. It would be easiest if... If I were to do this, I think. Move this out of the way like that, and then kind of bring it over like that and up there. Lovely. All right, red two and green four. So where is my red two at? There it is. How do I want to do this? I can just roll it that way and then bring it up. Lovely. All right, green four, where are you at? Hmm, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it with that die. So let's go on up over this way. We've got a four like that. Hmm. This might work. Oh, not quite. I need to shift it one over, I think. Or rather, one over this way. There we go. All right, so green four is in place. Then blue one and green three. So let's start bringing you over this way. And it looks like I can actually probably do something very similar. Hmm. How do I want to do this? I've got to shift the, the blue one over. But I'd really like it to be on its side here. I feel like I need to take advantage of all this space over here.
like this. No? Ah, almost. So if it was one too early, what I can do is roll it over like that and then try it again. There we go. Now let's get the green three over here. Hmm. So what we'll do is we need to shift this down one, essentially, right? How do I want to do that? No, that's still too early. So I need to shift it down the other way. There we go. Okay. I guess, um, I guess that's not it. <laughs> but that's the arrangement I think we had before, isn't it? Well, I don't know, guys. Uh, I don't know what else to do. Huh? I can't figure it out. I'm pretty sure that's what we did before. So I don't know. This shelf says dice. Looks like four purple books. Let's go through each one of them. What the? There's nothing written here. Huh? I mean, all the pages are blank. Are the other books the same? Let's have a look. Yeah, there's nothing here. This one's blank too. Huh? Something wrong? Is there something in that one? No, the pages are all blank. It's just... just what? Well, there are some pictures put in between the pages back here. Three of them, it looks like. <laughs> you found a picture of a blue die, a picture of a green die, and a picture of a red die. You can review them by visiting the archive. Okay, let's go to the archive. Picture of blue dice, okay. And the green dice. And the red dice. So that's our <laughs> location. Or our placement, rather. We need all three cards for that, I'm sure. Can't really click on the thing to the right of it. Now let's try this again, <laughs> after having spent that time playing it the wrong way. I guess the, the motif then is just literally, I'm going to explore everything before I try to play any of, any of the games. Um, okay. So, the blue dice. I'd imagine this means about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then up 2. So, we need a blue here. I don't remember exactly what, though. What is it, a one? Okay. And then a five. This would have been really helpful the first time we did this puzzle, actually. <laughs> um, a five, two up, and then one to the left from that. So, this is a five. And then I think this was a, what, a two or a one? A one, I think? Yeah, a one. Alright. So then there are the green dice. Let's see, five and then up four. So one, two, three, four, five, and then up four. I think it was a green five, but I don't remember. Just to be safe, it's a six. Lovely. Six. <laughs> no, that didn't work out so well. Six, and then same relationship with the other ones, a two there. Okay, and then red three and red four, kind of in between those two, right? So, uh, I should just check to be safe. So, it's what, five and then up three, be three. So I got red three there. 
and then a red four up to the left from that. Oops, it's red. Oh boy, guys, this is gonna be a long episode. <laughs> We've got a lot of puzzles to solve. This is gonna be a long episode. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's see what we can do. So the first one, let's aim for the one down here. So one is on this face. So I want to start by kind of arranging it in the right place, I guess. If we go this way, not quite there yet. So what I'll need to do instead is rotate it up a little bit. Kind of like so. Hmm. Not quite. Not quite. Hmm. Can each of these die? Yeah, so they're pretty similar in that sense. Um, how do I want to get the one over there? I can do this. Nope. Down. But that's too close. I need to shift it. There we go. Whew. All right, uh, let's go for a red three. Oh, this might actually work out really nicely. Yeah, <laughs> that worked out really nicely. All right, green six. Now we gotta go, we're gonna be a little bit too early here. No, that worked out well too. All right, red four. We're gonna have to do something similar to what we did before. This might work. Actually, no, if I do it like, I had to do it one more. Nope, up that way. There we go. Red four there. Green two. All right. And then the blue five. There's the five. Hmm. How do we want to do this? I'm gonna take it all the way down to this end here. Actually, no, let's go all the way up here so I can try to readjust this. If I have a five here, I can equivalently try to get a five here and then I can just roll it into the, the right direction. So if I do this, I can then roll it this way, and that should get me a five there, which means I should be able to get a five over here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, one. Oh, did I misplace it? I did. <laughs> I knew it, so these both need to be shifted over by one. Okay, well, admittedly, it's not too big of a deal, right? But, of course, self-sabotage. Gotta love it. Ha! Got it. I had a feeling you could do it. Good job. Have a look at this. Hey, it opened. Alright, we got the blue memory card. 
And now we can head on over to something to set up from the wall. You can work around by exiting. Um, so at this point, we have the darts game we already completed. It's just really this one. Right? I'm gonna look up what this is, because I don't... Just, I guess, to be safe, is there anything else I can explore in the area? I don't think so. We did that. We did that. Okay. So let's go ahead and check this out then. Okay, so it's either all of the hexagons green or all of the triangles red. Er, and all the triangles red or all the triangles green and everything else red. However, given that this is all red, I think I actually might need to do that instead by trying to make everything red. So let's go ahead and try that actually. That wasn't it. What if I were to do that? And then similarly do that. That should do it. Nice. Okay, so luckily it wasn't actually that I had to remember the exact instructions from the previous rooms. Because otherwise that would have been very frustrating. But I also only really knew that because I tried to look back at what the instructions were and, and failed. On the other hand, with the darts game, I didn't click on the game and assumed it was going to be like this one, right? Uh, I should have remembered not the specific instructions from the security room in this case, but that there were displays on the left and right hand sides which showed the patterns I needed to get the puzzle to reflect. And if I had done that, or remembered that, then I would have noticed, like I just did, that, oh, all of these are red. I need to make this puzzle so that it's all red. And for that, I, I can't actually fault the game. I, I think uh, that was on me for not uh, picking up on the, the broader theme of how to solve the puzzle, rather than focusing on the specific instructions from that particular escape. But anyways, did, did I solve it? Yeah, that must be the answer. Look. The glass doors. They're open. Well done. That was some good work, Sigma. Apparently it's a large computer. Yeah, it's... Every single time I try to click on that arrow, my computer's mouse just, like, keeps jumping forward. Let's look at the binder. It's a binder. Let's have a look. There's only a single piece of paper in here. It says, Q Chamber Special AB Game. You found instructions for the Q Chamber's AB game. You can review it by visiting the archive. What? What? The Q Chamber's AB game? Oh, and each of these has a B on it. Okay. So it looks like we've got another AB game to play. Where were those slots? I think they were over here. Screen, it's blank. I don't see any buttons or anything. No, it wasn't there. Where was it? Over here. What the heck is this ridiculously huge thing? There's a screen down here. It looks like this is the only part you can actually interact with. But it's dark. There's nothing on it. There are some card slots underneath the screen. They look just like the ones on the polling machines in the AV rooms. So that means we need to put some memory cards in here, right? Yeah, like the one you've got in your hand right now. Screen card, huh? Well, let's see if anything happens when I put it into the green slot. All right, and time for the red. This red card, huh? Well, let's see if anything happens. And lastly, the blue card. This blue card, huh? Well, let's see if anything happens when I put it into the blue slot. Would you look at that? Looks like you turned it on. Okay. Us, A, and B are all pairs consisting of two people. Okay, C, D, and E are solos consisting of a single person. First, move the pairs A and B to the blank areas on the left under pair. Next, move solo C, D, and E to the blank areas on the left over solo. You can move them by sliding the letter icons. A pair and a solo aligned vertically with verses between them will face off against one another in the A-B game. You can still move icons even after you've placed them. Once an opponent has been selected, the game will begin. Choose the vote for the us pair either ally or betray. The results of your match will be displayed, along with the results from the other teams. 
If the correct number of people reach the target BP after playing three rounds, the game will be completed. Interesting. Alright, let's check what the instructions are. AB game, Q edition. Hints for the AB game, Q edition. Three people will definitely choose ally. Three people will definitely choose betray. One is a mysterious mirror man. He will always do whatever his opponent does. First answer, strive for nine with six cooperators. Second answer, we must be the only ones to surpass nine. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So... Hmm. What's a good strategy here? I'm curious what it means. Three people, right? There are nine people in total. Seven, if you don't include us. That's... How do we find out which people will always choose ally, right? It's interesting that they're referred to as people. Not pairs or solos. Because there are five pairs and solos in total. And that means there will be five, you know, votes that are not us, right? Each turn. But will the pairs change? They must, right? What happens when somebody who always chooses ally is paired with somebody who always chooses betray? That's kind of what confuses me at the moment. But what we can do is try to find out who the, the mirror person is. At this time, we don't really know. I wonder if they change each time. Push ally or betray. We'll choose... So what are we going to shoot for first? Strive for nine with six cooperators. Strive for nine with six cooperators. I don't really know what that means. Does that mean everybody gets nine? That's impossible in three rounds, right? No, it is possible. Oh man, I wish, I wish it showed that for longer. So who betrayed? It was A and E, I think. A and E chose betray, but their partners both chose ally, right? So neither A, none of, well, actually that means we know who the mirror is, C, right? C always mirrors. And because C is a solo, we've got that written. So, all right, so C is the mirror. Okay, so now what? We're not going to be able to get everybody to 9 at this point, so we might as well shoot for us being the only people to get to 9, right? So if A betrayed and E betrayed, what I can try to do is pair them up like so. And what, D and B chose ally? So I can try to do that, and we can just mirror with C again, right? And we'll choose ally. Similarly, yeah, so A and E are two of the betrayers. Okay, so now we can... Oh, what was it again? I think it was A and E are the betrayers? Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll pair up C, the mirror, with one of the betrayers. We'll pair up the other betrayer with one of the other ally people, and we'll do this so that we ally. And we should be the only people to get to nine. Oh, wait, no, we screwed it up because the betrayer got it. Ah! <laughs> okay. But, um, that's good to know. So, it's what? A and E are the betrayers, and I think they'll stay that way. So A and E are the betrayers. I'm still trying to figure out what exactly the instructions are for strive for nine with six cooperators. I guess that means there are nine people. What does it mean for six cooperators? I guess it means all of the people that choose ally will continue to do so. If A and E are the betrayers, we just pair them up each round, and the rest of us can, you know, do our own thing. 
and we should get there, right? I think that's what they mean. That would be six people in total. Including us. Okay, so that was one of the solutions. Cool. Ha! Got it! Way to go! Good work. Hey, look, the screen changed color. So, would this be... Could this be... Should this be... <laughs> yeah, it, I knew it. That looks like a password to the safe. We did it! This should get us into that safe. So that's the escape password, right? Naturally, we're gonna have to play the AB game again, though, for the second... Um... Okay. For that, aim for that second goal, though, right? Oops. So the second goal was, we must be the only ones to surpass nine. So how do we want to do that? Well... We can... We'll have to betray people, right? So what we can do is this very first round... Hmm... Who always allies? It's B, right? And... D. So we can betray D. And then what we can do is we can pair up A and E again, and they'll just stay neutral, and B and C will only gain two points, and we choose Betray to bring D down. Okay. And now, what else can we do? We want to make sure B and C don't gain too many points, right? B and C always ally. So we can put them with somebody who betrays. So if we put B together with E, for example, and put A together with C, and then match ourselves up with D, and then pick... Well, I wonder what happens if I pick Betray here, actually. I mean, so theoretically, we're, we're doing all right here, right? We're the only ones with nine. So what we can do is actually just pair ourselves up with C and we can both betray and it'll be lovely. And then who are our people? Um, B and D. They can ally with each other and it'll be lovely and A and E can betray each other and it'll be lovely too. And in case it was going to be a problem that D died, we made sure that they stayed alive. So nice one. Looks like that was the answer. Oh? There are different symbols now, in different places. You found a safe password. Okay. Cool, and with that we should have both passwords and we've finished up the queue room. It's interesting that they say there are eight puzzles to solve though, right? I can see four for each side of the room. And then there's the dice one, the dart one, and then that one. Oh, and then I guess the AB game itself could count as a puzzle too, right? So it isn't one from each individual room, unfortunately. Well, fortunately and unfortunately. It seems like that could be a really long escape room otherwise. The same we've seen in the other rooms. That means we probably open it the same way too. We just need to plug in the password, right? Yeah. Why don't you give it a shot? Alright. I don't remember what it was again, so it's like, what, star, moon, sun? Cool. Star, moon, sun. Good job! You opened it! Hmm, well done. Alright, so there's the gold file. And then lastly, we have the escape password. I should have noted it when we were looking, but that's alright. Sun, sun, star. And with that, we've completed the queue room. Which was honestly a really cool room. I think my only complaints were initially that the directions, I guess, for each minigame weren't clear, slash it might be easy to misconstrue that what you're supposed to do is what you did the first time around you met the puzzle. But if you click around enough, it, it, it does become clear what your actual instructions are. Maybe with the exception of the hexagon, that's the only one where you really had to remember that, oh, I was 
imitating or mimicking the images from the hexagon triangle setups I saw around the room. So I just need to mimic the one that's that I'm in the room with. Um, if you remember that, which is honestly not too big of a stretch, um, I think it's doable. So my my initial frustrations with the room were initially or were you know largely my own problem in terms of not identifying or not exploring the room to its fullest extent before attempting the puzzles, which should be a practice I've learned from the, the previous rooms. I feel like I always did that in the other rooms, but I was just eager to hump, or jump into the puzzles uh, that we ran, ran into here. And I figured I was supposed to know how to do them because they were the same puzzles from before. But nevertheless, yes, it's open. Are there two doses of Excelivir in here? Okay then, let's see what's in here. First off, two star key cards. We can use these to play the AB game as many times as we want. Hold on. Those keys are important, but... And look at this. Uh, Excelivir! The Radical Six Cure! Oh. Oh, thank goodness. I... I don't know what to say. Quark is... Quark is going to be okay. Is he crying? Alright, let's get out of here. We need to get this stuff to Quark and Alice. Yeah, you're right. This key should do the trick. Let's get moving. I will say, I also really like the Minesweeper sort of aspect of it too. That was fun. The door's lock. It says lock. You guys ready? All set here. Go for it. Alright. Three, two, one. Two, three. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> Jeez. One more time. Three, two, one. And we've opened it. Lovely. Yeah, I, I like the puzzles in this room quite a bit, actually. It was a very cool culmination of a lot of the puzzles we've solved to get to this point in the first place. But, Fi's like, huh. And we get to see what we actually unlock, right? We've made it through this Q room, and we haven't ever in any of the other timelines seen what people say when they get through the Q room. I don't think anybody's even made it to the Q room. So many people are dead by the time we get to the white doors that we haven't heard anything about what's in the Q room or what's past it. We also have that hologram thing that inevitably Zero is going to talk to us about, so or talk to us through. So I am looking forward to hearing that, of course. Um, but... All this information, what comes past the Q room, what we're going to hear from potentially Zero, what's going to happen now that we have two doses of Excelivir is going to be, of course, in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know I was a bit frustrated at times and arguably unjustifiably so, um, but I appreciate you guys' patience and are looking forward to seeing how this true end, well, comes to an end. But until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.